What is going on, people of the extranet? Tyler here with Random Automotive. Sorry, I'm kind of talking over that fan over there. My power inverter is running something. Um, today, I'm going to show you on your 2009 through 2014 F-150 how to get rid of this tire pressure sensor fault message. Now, with the case of most of these trucks is the tire pressure sensors, each one of them has a built-in battery. And over time they go dead and they're actually sealed units so you actually have to buy a whole new tpms or tpm i guess to replace that and to fix that battery issue they transmit over a frequency uh, i think it's somewhere in the 400 megahertz range to the computer of the truck to tell the truck hey this is what your tire pressure is so they do it wirelessly per tire now if you feel like you've got a relatively new tpm or tpms in your truck and the system's just lost connection with one of them, you can do this. You can come over to your hazards button. You can give it a click, off. Okay, so three times you heard the truck honk and it dinged. It's also gonna tell you to train front left tire. Now, if you have a strong magnet, sometimes they have a little um, computer that can do it, but you can also let one pound of air out of that tire over there and if it's still there it still recognizes it, it'll pick it up and then it'll go to train front right train front rear left and train rear right and you can retrain the system that way without having any special gadgets and so to get out of that mode you just turn the ignition off it'll honk twice and you're out of that mode but let's say that's not the issue and that didn't fix the problem so as you say i started the truck back up and it automatically gave that tire pressure sensor fault message again because there is an issue. I'm gonna show you how to disable this system. Now it will require some tools, but no more than uh, let's say $20 worth or so. So let me show you what you'll need. So you will need one of these ELM327 OBD2 OBD interfaces. I can't talk, goodness gracious. You will need one of these. The link is in the description. I think this was like 20 bucks. Now, the difference is, and I'm gonna show you something kind of important here. Let me set that there so it doesn't just fall away. They do have a wireless Bluetooth version of this. Now, I do not recommend it for this service procedure because these are really good at reading codes and things like that and clearing codes from your engine from an app. Sometimes they'll work, but for the software we're using, it's just not very good. So you will need a wired ELM adapter like I have in the description, and you will need a laptop computer. So hopefully if you have all these things, it should be good to go. If you don't, uh, there's probably other ways around it too, but you want to download a program called Forescan and the link for that's in the description. The only thing that you will need to do immediately is if you go open the program and you go to this little about section here, you will need to register the activation code. It'll, there's a process online that'll tell you how to do that. It is free, you get like a two month trial, so this part don't cost you anything. Just keep in mind that when you do this, it'll take you about two or three hours to get your activation code, usually to your email. And there's a process on telling you how to activate that and walk through it. And I may do a video on that soon just to kind of show you. Um, so if you have to order an adapter like that, if you don't have one of those laying around, most people don't, I didn't. Um, it's a good idea to order that, then get your activation license code while you're waiting for that to come in the next day or whatever. It's also pretty important too, that I would probably, if I were you and you could, just order the same adapter that I have. I know this works. It has to have an MS slash HS CAN switch. Um, and I'm not really sure exactly what the functions are on this. I know it reads different modules, but you wanna make sure you have one with the switch. Now, if you're not very computer savvy, this is probably still a pretty easy process. So we're gonna to go to the top left corner here. Uh, you may have to install some drivers on your computer. There are a lot of good videos working you how to do that. It's a pretty simple process. So we're going to click here to connect to vehicle. And it already has detected my vehicle here. It's detected that there is an adapter installed. I've loaded this vehicle before, so it knows what it is. Ford F-150 two valve, 2010 model. And it gives portion of the VIN there. Connection's been established and we're gonna just let this run for a few minutes. So it's still reading vehicle information. Okay, so once the uh, data is starting to load, it's gonna say, please set the HS MS CAN switch to MS CAN and hit okay. Um, you can see here it is on MS CAN already. And so we'll go ahead and hit okay. 
I noticed that, however, it gave me some errors here. It's unable to read DTC. This is a common mistake. So what we'll do, we're actually gonna start this over. So we'll click here to disconnect. It is disconnected. You wanna plug this in with the switch facing HS can or right. And then once that is done, reconnect. It's gonna found the profile again. We'll click yes. It's gonna load a lot faster. You can see now it's fine in the modules. It is correct. Now swap it to MS can when it prompts you. So you'll go left and swap, hit okay. It loads the rest of the codes and modules there. So with this program, you can also read codes on the engine. Of course, there's no engine codes, no OBD2 codes that you normally have. It also gives you a couple more modules like your uh, your airbag system, ABS, etc., HVAC. You can run tests on this also. The code showing up here. Tire pressure sensor fault, of course, obviously. So as long as the interface says vehicle green and ready green, we're also going to go ahead now and show you how to turn this off. Pretty simple process. So we're going to go to the tab that looks like a computer chip. Blech. It's called configuration program and we're going to click that. Now you got to be careful in here because you don't want to click the wrong thing and reset something you shouldn't. Uh, under the module tab, you'll have GEM slash SJB. You're going to want to double click that. Actually, no, I'm sorry. You're going to select it and then hit this play button. It's going to enter in a service mode and read data. So once that data has been read, you're going to see tire pressure sensor or tire pressure monitor is enabled. So this is going to disable the system. Now it will get rid of the message, but also understand that you're not going to have a TPMS system in this truck. It was mandated in 2007 that all vehicles have these. So just keep that in mind that, you know, you're not going to have that system anymore. It's not going to let you know if you have a low tire. So in order to disable it, you're going to want to uh, hit tire pressure monitor double click that and change the value from one enabled to zero disabled click the check mark now as you can see the light's still on we've got to write that data to the truck so to do that we just simply click right and that will save it to the ecu so i clicked right the old value is enabled and the new value is disabled that's what we want to see nothing else changed and you'll go to click this check mark and when i click this check mark Watch the truck, the light went out. Tire, our block's been programmed successfully. Please cycle ignition off and back on. So we'll do that now. You can see the lights off. It still gives the error message. We're gonna shut the truck off and back on. You don't have to start it. You can just cycle it on like that. So mileage comes up. We'll go ahead and start it up. And now you can see no error message. So we'll just click OK. And that's it. Pretty simple process. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on this to show how more of this works. But at the time, pretty simple. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure you will. You're more than free to ask. I'm going to try to help walk you through any of it I can, especially the setting up the driver stuff. I didn't show you that, but I'll provide any links that you may need in the description. And then I may come back and do a video in the future if I have enough questions on this to show you how to um, install this and have this properly set up. But it's pretty straightforward. Most of the time it does well. Um, I believe this program only works for Windows. I could be wrong on that, so don't hold me to that. So if you have a MacBook or something like that, you may have to run a program that you can run Windows programs. Um, but otherwise, so far, so good. Now, I have had the truck in this uh, disabled state for the tire pressure monitor for about two weeks now. Hasn't come back on. Hasn't gave me any problems at all, really. And I don't have to deal with that annoying blinking light. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also subscribe. I think it's over there. Um, if you enjoyed it and ring the little bell um, to get notification of future videos, because you may want to see one if you're having trouble setting this up. We'll try to do a little walkthrough video soon. So until next time, we'll catch you in the next one.